Today we're going to look at mark text, which is the the method that you use to put labels on a chart instead of having a um instead of having a legend, say. Now there's quite a good example here with the bar chart in the in the Vega documentation. This is the um it's the link to it, which I'll put in the link to the video. And you notice something odd about mark chart and that about mark text, excuse me. In that you have to create the bar chart first and then you have to call mark text on the bar chart object. That's a little unusual uh, as regards the marks and how they work. But um, it is what it is. Now, it's quite straightforward in the case of a bar chart. So, you know, this is quite an easy example to, to follow. But it's a little bit more complex with the line chart, which is what we're going to look at now. So to get our line data, uh, come on. To get, <coughs> that's unusual. Okay. To get our, um, I didn't have the kernel turned on. To get our data, we're going to call on the Iowa electricity data set. And the reason we're calling on Iowa electricity is because it's very simple. It's a table of, there's a column of years, there are three sources, and there's this net generation um, figure, which gives us, you know, a very straightforward chart. Just mark a line. Code x equals year, which we'll identify as temporal for time because that way it formats better. Um, we'll use net generation as our y axis. We're going to color by uh, source and we're going to have a tooltip. And for the tooltip, we're going to use all the columns. A year source net generation, there's only three of them. So you're tempted here to put in DF columns, but you can't put in DF columns because DF columns is an alter index object. Sorry, it's a pandas index object, and alter doesn't like um, alter panda. Alter doesn't like pandas index objects as a tooltip. It only wants a list as a tooltip. Therefore, we call to list on our um, we call to list on our tooltip and that's a problem solved now we'll just uh, put the width as 700 just to make the chart a little bit easier to see type C for the chart hit shift and enter to run the cell and here we have our chart now because I've blown up this screen so it'll be a little bigger on the on the video, the width is too small. Make it, there the width was odds too big, so make it smaller to 500, and this is our chart, right? And this is, you know, a, a perfectly lovely chart. The, um, the tooltip has worked out fine. Everything's looking correct. Renewables have gone up, fossil fuels have gone down. This is what we want. Now, where this gets interesting is, what it, modern, chart theory says it's kind of a pain to have to look at your line see it's a blue color look across to the legend see which one's blue it's fossil fuels this is fossil fuel now it's partly solved because we have the tooltip that says source but one of the things about a line chart is that between the actual data points there's no tooltip right so it makes sense then to have a label about here which is fossil fuels this will be renewables and this will be nuclear energy because it's easier to read it that way. Now, because we saw here in our example, there's a specific example here where each each bar exists as something to which we can attach the text. Right? The only thing that encode takes is text. It doesn't take an X and Y parameter. So we need something equivalent to bars over here. So we need to create another chart 
that we're going to lay over this chart and then we attach the text to that. So what are the points that we're going to attach the text to? Well, they're going to be the final points here. So the 2017 value for fossil fuels, the 2017 value for renewables and the uh, the 2017 value for nuclear if we can find it yeah anyway it's there so how do we do that how we do that is we have to create another well firstly we need to create a second data frame so <coughs> we're going to create a list called holder and then we're going to create a pandas group by object called grouper i always call these things grouper i don't know why i just do um and we're going to group by source so for a b in grouper we're going to append to holder what we're going to do is so a is the uh a is the source, so it'll be fossil fuels, nuclear energy, or renewables. B is that is the original data frame sliced by that. So the first one is the data for source only, is the data for fossil fuels only. Second one is nuclear energy, third is renewables. And what we want to do is we want to get the final year value for that and append that into holder. And then we'll call PD concatenate holder, and that'll create our third data frame, our our second data frame on which we'll be able to create our second chart. So, uh, for the holder, we want to slice B, and we will slice it by setting B year equals B year max, and we'll append that to holder each time. Now, DF2, always a great name uh, for a data frame, DF2, uh, is going to be PD concat holder. Take a look at DF2 to make sure it came out right. And it's come out beautifully, relatively speaking. Uh, we're going to create a second, um, a second chart called C1. I suppose called C2 is a bit more consistent, um, which will be a scatter chart or chart DF2 mark point encode x equals year time y equals net generation. And we don't need to put in a tooltip or a um, we don't need to put in a tooltip or a color for reasons that will quickly become obvious. I hope. So anyway, this only gives us three points then, which are these um, these points here. But where this gets interesting, if it gets interesting, is when we we plot this onto so our first chart to C, and this is C two. We plot those on top of each other <coughs> and what we see is we have our charts here our original line chart and then we have the points onto which we're going to attach the text so we now have a third chart which we'll call c3 and that's going to be c2 on c2 again it's the same process as here in the um in the documentation where they had bars called mark text on bars we have c2 and we're calling uh, mark text on it for text in code only takes one parameter which is text the text will be a source which is a nominal data source and we're going to look at all three charts on top of each other and that would be C plus C2 plus C3. Fantastic. Now, here's our chart, and we have only, we have some problems. The, 
the the labels don't line up terribly well. There's this ugly point on the C2 chart, and there's still a legend up here. But all of these can be fixed uh, just by going back to the chart. So we're going to start by trying to move the trying to move the um, the labels out a little to the left. So we're going to move them out along the x-axis and you might remember from your math in high school that uh, dx is what's normally used for a a change in the in, the, in an x parameter and mark text is one of the few occasions when the mark method in alter um takes a parameter so dx is going to be how much we're going to move the label now the problem is that it's not always easy to tell, especially with time data. It's not always easy to tell how much a label should move. So the way you do it is trial and error. We start with 10. Take a look. 10 hardly moved it at all. So we go up to 100. 100 is too much. That brings us to 50. 50 is too little, I think. Go down to 40. And I think that's about right. Funny how nuclear energy is closer to um, is closer than fossil fuels or renewables. Wonder why that is. It's probably a, a fault in the data, but I'm not going to worry about it today. That'll be something to worry about some other time. Now, the next thing that we'll do is we're going to get rid of the points. And while mark point generally doesn't take a parameter, it can take a size parameter. And here we're going to set the size to zero. So it's disappeared on that chart. And it's disappeared on that. And now on our chart with the labels, it's disappeared on that. So now those points are gone and we still have our uh, pleasing labels. That are that are easy to associate with the line in a way that the legend is not easy to associate with the line that just leaves us one thing left and that is i'm going to delete this because that confused me just now it's always best to delete what you don't need anymore so <clears throat> the last thing we want to do is get rid of the legend here and the way to get rid of a legend is to tell alter that you don't need it so color instead of just the Instead of just the column name, we're going to have the column name and we're going to add a parameter to alt color and that is legend equals none, comma. And now the legend has disappeared. A disaster in that chart with no labels. But obviously in this, the, the chart that we wanted from the start, a complete triumph. And there's a lovely chart with lovely, easy to read labels. Uh, we still have the tool tips. It's just a, a successful chart in every way. Very, very useful. So that's it all for today. Please uh, like, click like, notify and subscribe to keep the videos coming. It's the only way they can keep coming. Uh, we'll see you again next time. Live long and prosper.